So welcome to this latest video 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over the GCSE maths higher topic of algebraic fractions looking at some past exam questions. Now as always I'll include a copy of the questions that we go through in this video in a link in the description below for you to have an attempt at before watching this video as we go through the answers. Now before we get started working through some algebraic past exam questions, let's just have a quick review over this topic. Now the key thing to remember is that with algebraic fractions that there are many types of different questions you could get related to this particular topic. So there are types of questions where you've got algebraic fractions where you've got to add, subtract, multiply or divide into a single fraction. You've got algebraic fraction questions where you've just got to simplify by cancelling out common terms and there could be multiple letters and multiple numbers in those fractions. You can also have algebraic fractions where you've got to simplify via factorising and that could be both into single brackets or double brackets where you're using quadratics. And you can also have solving algebraic fractions where you are turning fractions into a single fraction before potentially cross multiplying or taking the denominator over the other side. Now if you're wanting any particular specific detail on any of those aspects then I'll include some links on uh, for some of these lessons that cover those particular areas in the description below. Now also with algebraic fractions when answering these questions you can't forget the basics so there are always going to be links to numerical fractions so know what you do when you're adding numerical or taking away algebra uh, numerical fractions and multiplying and dividing. Algebraic manipulation in terms of collecting like terms, expanding brackets, factorizing into brackets, algebraic calculations when you're adding, taking away, multiplying and dividing algebraic expressions and also obviously factorizing into single and double brackets as mentioned and also quadratics, paying particular notice of how to spot difference of two squares. So without further ado, let's get started on some exam questions. Now a little reminder, if you want wanting access to these questions, then all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description. So looking at question one, we can see here that we've got two terms and the question is asking us to simplify fully. Now, as we've got two terms, what we want to then establish is what of those two terms got in common. Well, they've both got numbers and they've both got x's. So looking at the numbers, I'm looking for a common factor that appears in both 2 and 24, in which 2 goes into both of those. So if I divide both numbers by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 2 divided by 24 is 12. Then looking at the letters now, I can notice that I've got x's in both terms, so I can cancel 1x or the lowest power of x from both those two terms. So I'm taking away 1x from both the numerator and the denominator. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with 1 times x, which is just x, and 12 in the denominator. Now, another way of answering this type of question is to split this fraction up in so that I've got one fraction which involves the numbers and another fraction that involves the x's. So then from this, you might find this easier to simplify in which then I can just multiply the numerators together so I get x and multiply the denominators together and as you can see I get the same answer. With que now for question 1b again we just want to simplify this single algebraic fraction so again we've got numbers we've got d's and we've got e's so one way of splitting this up so if I separate the numbers then separate the d's and then separate the e's so looking at the numbers, I can take I can take three out or six, yeah, three out. So that becomes two, that becomes five. The D's can cancel out, so I've just got one and one. And if you cancel out completely, it just turns into a one. And then here in the last one, I can take an E from both the top and the bottom, and that then becomes a one. So looking at what's on the top, I've got two times one times one, which is two, and five times one times E which is 5e. So I'm looking for 2 over 5e, which is our last option. Then for 1c, it says simplify fully 2a plus 2a over b plus 3b over a. So again, here you can see I've got a mixture of denominators. So what I need to do is find a common denominator. So my common denominator here is where I multiply the two denominators together. So that becomes ab. I've multiplied the first fraction by a, so at the top is going to be 2a times a, so that's going to be 2a squared. And I've multiplied the second fraction by b, so that's going to be 3b squared. So once I've got my denominator same, I just simply add the numerators together. So I've got 2a squared plus 
three b squared all over a b and that is oh, not our third option it's going to be our fourth option it's close then moving on to question 1d so here i'm just multiplying now one thing you want to do just like with numerical fractions you may want to simplify first at the moment nothing really simplifies so if i deal with the numerator i've got three times eight which is 24 and then x squared y cubed then at the bottom i've got two times six which is 24 i've got x to the power of four and i've got a single y so then i can cancel out so the 24th cancel out I've got two x's at the top, four at the bottom. So the two x's at the top cancel out and I've just got two at the bottom. And then I can cancel one y from the top. So then that turns into a two. So what's left is y squared over and at the bottom I've just got x squared. Now one way you could also write that as y over x squared. But personally, I'll probably leave it as that. Now moving on to question two, it says simplify fully. So for this, what you want to do is, well, we can't cancel anything in terms of num numbers or the x's because not every single one of the terms in this particular algebraic fraction has got the same thing. And as you can see, I've got four terms. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to look at the numerator. Well, I can factorize that numerator by taking the five out. So that becomes five x minus two. And then lo and behold, I've got x minus two at the bottom. So these two things cancel out, give me an answer of just five. Question 3a, here we want to factorize, so you should be able to spot this is a difference of two squares. So what do you have to square to get x squared? Well, that's going to be x. And what do you have to square to get 16? Well, that's going to be four. One's a plus and one's a minus. Now moving on to question 3b, it says hence simplify fully. So again, looking at the top, well, this is going to be the same as my answer in part a so that's going to be x plus 4 x minus 4 then if i factorize the bottom and look for a double bracket again two numbers that multiply together give me 20 add together give me 9 and that's going to be 5 and 4 and they're both going to be plus so then i can see that i've got a common bracket in x plus 4 so they cancel out so all that I'm left with is x minus 4 at the top and x plus 5 at the bottom. Moving on to question 4, it says show that for when x is not equal to minus 1. Now the only reason why they write this is to show that the denominator cannot equal 0 because obviously you can't divide by 0. So try not to put too much emphasis when dealing with these questions over the fact that x can't equal a particular number. So then from this... What we can see is well in each of the four terms they've all got a factor of two so i can divide by two so that then becomes three x squared minus three over x plus one then i can't simplify anything in terms of its entirety so then i look at the numerator now i can simplify that by factorizing so i take a three out so that then becomes x squared minus one over x plus one and then what you should then notice is that this here is a difference of two squares. So that there is a difference of two squares. So that then becomes three lots of x minus one, x plus one, all over x plus one. And then from this, you can see that this bracket cancels with that. So all I'm left with is three x minus one in brackets or three x minus 3. Moving on to question 5, it says simplify fully. So again, looking at the four terms, not all of them have got a y and not all of them have got a common factor. So then I look at the numerator. I can factorize the numerator so that would take out a 2y. So I've got 1 minus 3y over and then I can factorize the denominator by taking the 5 out. So that becomes 5 and that becomes 3y minus 1. Now at this stage you might think to yourself, well that doesn't cancel because I can't simplify the 2y and the 5 and the brackets aren't the same. However, what I could do is if I reverse the sign of everything here,
So if I write 2y, 1 minus 3y, and instead of writing positive 5, I'm going to write negative y. And instead of positive 3y, I'm going to multiply by minus 3y, and I've got plus 1. Now, if I multiply that out, I'm still going to end up with 15y minus 5. And again, just to prove my point, minus 5 times minus 3 plus 1. So if I multiply them out, I get positive 13y and I get minus 5. But then with this, what I can then do is if I flip these two things around, I then get the same bracket. So then the final answer then is 2y over minus 5, or you could have minus 2y over 5. Moving on to question 6, it says solve. So again, when you're solving, you want to make sure you've got a single fraction on the left-hand side, a single fraction on the right-hand side, and once you have, you then want to cross-multiply. So here I've got 7 times 1 minus x, and I'm going to end up with 3 times 2x plus 1. So then expanding the brackets, I get 7 minus 7x equals 6x plus 3. Take the 7x over to the side, so I have 7 equals 13x plus 3. Take the 3 over, so I have 4 equals 13x, so x equals 4 over 13. Then moving on to question 7, it says simplify fully. So again, looking at quadratics, this is a dot and this is double brackets. So looking at x squared minus x minus 6, it's going to be x, x, 3 and 2, and it's going to be a minus and a plus over x minus 3, x plus 3. Then the x minus 3s cancel out, so I'm just left with x plus 2 over x plus 3. Now, moving on to question 8, it says solve, and we've got to solve this. Now, the difference between this and the previous question is that here we haven't got a single fraction on the left-hand side. So what we need to do is we need to combine these two things. Now, here our common denominator is going to be x plus 2 and x minus 1. So to get that, all I've done is I'm going to multiply the first fraction by the second denominator and the second fraction by the second denominator. So what you should have is 2y, and I'm multiplying that by y minus 1. And on the second one, I've got 3, and I've got y plus 2. So then simplifying that, I get 2y squared minus 2y plus 3y plus 6, all over y plus 2, y minus 1 equals 2. Then if I take this double bracket over to the side, end up with 2y squared plus y plus 6 equals 2. And it's going to be two lots of y squared plus y minus 2. So then expanding the brackets out, I end up with 2y squared plus 2y minus 4. The 2y squareds cancel out. So then I've then got, take the y of to the side, so I end up with 10 equals y, so y equals 10. So moving on to our last question, question 9, it says solve. So here I've got fraction equals a fraction, so I can go straight into cross multiplying. So what I've got is I've got 4 lots of x squared plus 2, and that equals 3x multiplied by 3x plus 1. Then expanding the brackets out, I'll get 4x squared plus 8 equals 9x squared plus 3x. Then if I take all of this over to the side, end up with 0 equals 5x squared uh, plus 3x minus 8. And then what I then want to do is then go on to factorise this to find out what x is going to equal. So again, if you want to do this using the magic number way, so I've got two numbers that multiply together to give me minus 40, add it together, add together to give me 3, so I'm looking at 8 and 5, and it's going to be 
plus 8 and minus 5. So here I've got 5x squared minus 5x plus 8x minus 8 equals 0. Factorising these two things, I get 5x. Let me just write that a little bit better. So I end up with 5x x minus 1 plus 8x minus 1 equals 0. So I've got 5x plus 8 and x minus 1 equals 0. So x is going to either equal minus 8 over 5 or positive 1. And there we go.